Hey guys, and welcome to this next part of the development of our characters. In this case, we're going to develop a healer character. I've decided to go for like a sorceress kind of druid theme. Uh, I was explaining like a war mage, and I wanted to expand a little bit on the theme of the, you know, the theory, uh, so that you can see that we can also apply what we were mentioning earlier on to the different kinds we can use. For example, in this case, we're not going to have any kind of weapon that she could use in an attack mode, but we're going to be working more on healing and things. Maybe in like defensive mode, we could place some kind of knife or insult that she could throw at our enemies. We can work on this as we go along. So to start with, we're going to lay down a sketch with a basic brush in a black tone. And as you can see, the background is in black again, sorry, in gray again, so I can see it better. What I'm doing right now is put in a back, uh, base tone in gray and on top of what we're going to add in illuminations. Uh, as I was saying before, we would normally we work, always work on one layer. So at the end of the drawing, we're not going to have the end result that we started with, but something that might be similar. I want to give uh, some more seriousness to the character I'm working on right now, as this is a sorceress, and I want her to show that. For now, what I've done is place those two orbs on the at the sides of the hands, and I want those to represent like the heal the healing powers and stuff. Uh, what I'm going to do now is look a little bit for a color palette. I think I'm going to look uh, for like a colder group of tones, seen as the character represents something that's much more serious than what maybe the first mage we worked on with purples and warm tones. It's simply so that you can see that there can be a ton of diversity in these kinds of characters. Alright, so what I've done is add in a second layer, and on this I'm making a second sketch that's going to be something that's a little cleaner. In this case I've added in a little weapon, a little knife, uh, the insults are inside her. This is just going to be it for a bit of defense. If not, the character wouldn't have too much potential when she's alone. She's going to be a character whose basic function is to protect the team. Okay. After having our figure cleaned and ready, we're going to move on to clear up some of the points and we're going to do some erasing and we're going to work on the base colors. The blue color is, as you can see, in this color area, I've gone for some more green colors. That's what this is about. The first layer we're going to have above is going to be the line that in each phase I'm going to be applying a new color. For example, the dark blue isn't the same as the one on the layer, so it's isolated in the other one. As I was explaining in the older lessons, for example, in this case, I've decided to give her uh, hair that's actually something you might see in the streets. But in generally, a silver-colored hair is something you might see in older ages. In this case, I wanted to put it in as it gives a more mysterious and mystic touch. The hairstyle is maybe more extravagant than what you might find in your day-to-day. -day. So this is why we're going to be relating this to mystery and magic and all this kind of medieval world. As you can see right now, I'm adding in those details gold in gold to give a little more strength to the scene. And then I'm going to group up all the layers so I can work on one like I, like I do. And here is where I'm going to be adding in the little details, okay? And erasing and applying layers of colors. As I said in the last lesson with the tank, each person has their own way of coloring and drawing. This is why it's much easier to look for a way in which each person can keep doing things even more comfortably. All right, this is what I'm doing to, going to do because it's more comfortable to me, but maybe you want to be more organized. Like, this is on the hair layer, and this is on the skin layer. I do it like this because I like the more traditional look we're going to get. Um, like it's an acrylic or an oil painting where the colors overlap, and you have to manage the pressure and all that stuff with the brushes.
the advantages that Photoshop is going to be able to give us is that we're going to be able to play with the filters that the layers give you. So what they'll let you do is add in those lights and shadows with that margin of error that we can't allow ourselves to have if we're drawing on paper. With, in this case, we can erase it if we're not entirely happy with the end result. What I'm doing now is going over all of the outside line art and the rest of the lines with a similar tone than the one we're going to be using with the fill. So with the hair, I'm going to try to use a darker gray and the hands, I'm going to try to get a darker tone. And in this way, I want to try and give a more, you know, more of a visual richness, richness to the final result. When I say darker, I don't want to say that I want the tone more going to black. I want the tone itself to be more saturized because black, when darkening, what it does is it makes it look dirty. In this case, for example, I can see that uh, I would be much. It would be much easier for me to copy the right hand to the left. So I'm going to hit Control C, Control V, and I've transformed it, reflected it on the other side, and in this way, I've saved the work of having to do the hand again. As I've already said, adding or subtracting colors is more of a personal decision. If you can't get the right ideas, maybe you could, you know, take references. This is something quite basic in drawing that I'm going to recommend a lot, okay? Coloring isn't something that you can learn in a day, so you can practice with references. For example, in this case, I'm using the basic brush I have here. It's flat. I'm lowering the opacity. I'm trying to lower as well the flow. Um, and yeah, with this, I'm trying to basically get an appearance that's a little more traditional looking. If you also play with some others, uh, like having blurs on the edges, uh, you can add in a gradient and you get some pretty nice little results there. For example, right now I'm trying to add in some little details. I'm trying to go over those edges and lines in the way I was telling you. So that we can get the outside part in a darker tone than the base fill. As you're seeing this right now on fast forward, what you can see is that this is quite a detailed job and it's not something that doesn't really hold up. Even though it's digital, it doesn't mean it's going to be slower. See, now this is taking me quite a lot of time to get this to look the way I like it. At the end of the day, what I'm doing is working on one layer alone. So I might have some mistakes that I cannot erase or that I have to erase in a more, you know, with more patience. For example, in the orbs, uh, I had to be practicing a bit because I didn't really know how I wanted them to work. So what I'm doing now is uh, is just creating a color base and through the Gaussian blur and some textured brushes, I'm creating this effect. And I'm also applying filters like screen. What I'm doing now is eliminating the character with the secondary lights that I've created in an artificial way, like the orbs, using a yellow tone for some areas. Okay, uh, so this will be the end result that we're going to be working with. I've given her a gradient background. So this will be the main sketch. Then this would be the clean one with color. This would be the one with, with, with color on without any lights or shadows. And this would be the end result that I hope you liked. Uh, see you guys in the next lesson. We're going to go even deeper. See you guys then. Bye.